one magnet according to the uh, field strength to the other one, it creates a distance. Take this as a sun, this is the earth. Where gravitational magnetic field of the sun is in balance with the earth, is where we stay. This is our position. So, if we do the same, if we do the same thing, you see, if I move the one magnet, the other magnet moves, because it has to keep its position, its distance. So, now, you see, you have an atom, you have a space. And each space you have, is dictated by the amount of magraph mass you have within center of the atom. So, if you have CO2, the space will be smaller. For example, if I can show it with the other rings, this will be the space for CO2. But, if you have a copper oxide, the magnets will be the spacing. So, you can see how the spacing is dictated. The gravitational magnetic field between two atoms, it dictates the gap which it creates in respect to each other. So, the new space components, or what we call magnetic components, works on this principle. You play, and you do, and you make systems, which are space dependent, according to the magnetic gravitational plasmatic condition. It's very simple, if you can see it, I'll try to replicate it in a much simpler way, that you can understand this in a simple way. So, in fact, if you take these atoms of different materials, and what you can do, you can go from one space into another, to create a motion, a capa what you call a transfer of energy, or you can use one to contain the other. When you have a lot of small ones, like, let's say, these black ones are the hydrogen, the gaps are smaller. You can use them to hold the copper oxide. These are the new batteries, these are the new gravitational plasmatic plasmas components. You use the spacing, and at the same time, as both have gravitational magnetic field, both the CO, the hydrogen and the copper oxide, they keep their distance. So, you literally, what you do, you make containers to hold, because of the spacing in the atomic structure. This is how the universe makes its batteries. This is how energies are held, even within the plasma center core itself. So, what happens is that you make a field container for your material. Then, you understand, you do not need matter to make batteries. This is one of the problems that you've had in past few weeks, playing with nanomaterials and gas materials. <coughs> but, you can use the reverse. You want higher current flow. Very easy. You use a stronger field in the back, to push the hydrogen through the gap. This does two things. In passing, creates friction or interaction between gravitational magnetic field of the copper oxide and the hydrogen. And in gap, because of the interaction, you go back to the principle of the creation of the light in the universe. We always said, when you have gravitational magnetic field of the Earth interacting with gravitational magnetic field of the Sun, the four forces, two pulling apart and two pushing together, creates a friction, which the residual is the light. So, if you understand this new combination, you do not need LEDs. You do not need light bulbs. You allow, you design, materials, which the gravitational magnetic fields, the gap, 
is large enough to allow the others, one or two plasmas to go through at a time, then you dictate the intensity of the light you want to use or create. If you put another material in front of once the material when the light has gone through, which has to slow down, the interaction and positioning of the two creates a friction of the barrier. You have your heating element. Cost zero. Material availability, the universe. You don't need to dig mines to get copper, to find new elements, to make LEDs, a new system. Transfer of energy, instantaneous. Control the wish, the desire to create light. So, from today on, we go with the production of new components, new materials, irrespective of material state but in gravitational magnetic field strength. So, you find out from now on, and the knowledge seekers has started from yesterday, developing systems which are totally work between magravs, magnetic gravitational fields of cancers and nano layers. They joke with each other, they had a very nice joke yesterday in how to try to create a light but in reality, they are not very far with it. So, you see the new components. You want resistors, you want to slow down, you want to speed up, you want the size of the storage to change. You carry enough power in one of your copper wires, which you have coated, than is used by all the nuclear and all the thermal power plants around the world. It's just you who have to understand how to release this power. And how to control it. So from now on, we don't look to build transistors or resistors or batteries or capacitors. It will take you a few weeks or a few months, according to your intelligence, to understand this principle and start using it. <coughs> we saw, initially, this was shown by uh, Wins and Brat a few weeks ago with putting two uh, nano layers and uh, aluminium in between. What have you done? You allow the release of gravitational magnetic field from a nano material, interaction with the matter on both sides. And what do you get? You collect the magnetic field plasma. We saw uh, um, the presentation that when you connected the wire from around the hole in the coil, you had a higher voltage, but you couldn't see the current. The current is in the plasmatic magnetic field level. The voltage is something you can measure because of the matter state of the LED. So, now we have to start developing tools that we measure the balance between gravitational magnetic field, distance between atomic structure in a simple way the man on the street can use, like a voltmeter, a system that we can tune into, to be able to travel and move, and create energy. And all this can be done, in a simple way, in what we call the OSS system. When you have an OSS system, in part of the system wire, you carry the light, you carry the plasma transfer, your friction, it becomes a light. You increase the field strength and the motion between the two, you make your tent, that's your Earth. You may create a small magnetic gravitational tent, which you are safe in, from the elements. That's what Earth atmosphere does for us in the plasma of the solar system. Then, you want heating to warm up, you create a friction between two plasmas. Cost less than a cent. Is not, if we would have told this to you a year ago, they say the guy's a lunatic. Now we are all lunatics, because now we are all understand it. Now is the next step for mankind, detached from matter. Then, if you understand this process, and you can close the gap, in strong enough, you can field, mix and add 
the two hydrogen atoms, because you create the dilution position to each other. And how many of these hydrogens you want to choose to add to each other? When you release the plasma, this is the real fusion. Fusion, the way the scientists are working on to add the plasmas, and then you, you get the helium from hydrogen, has never happened, will never happen, and it does not exist in the universe. Fusion comes by amalgamation of the plasmatic magnetic field, and then, when it's enough, and you can release it according to its environment, it manifests itself as the matter. So, if you can add all these hydrogen atoms together, and find balance in the content, what you will see, let's say for example, the plasma of gold. When you release that plasmatic condition at the field of strength you need, you will have <laughs> atomic gold. So, you can create as much gold as you like, with a little copper wire but you have to understand the process. So gold has no value, nowhere in the universe except on this stupid planet. You kill each other for it, for what? What it can be done, and it's done daily on every spot and corner of this universe. Now we start producing what we call Maghreb components. It'll take time for you to understand, it'll take time for you to realize how easier it is to work with then you realize, you can produce anything you need, anywhere in the universe, independent of the position. If you can make a continuous line of production that you open at the end, for example, the line, at this end, a condition that when these atomic structures join together as their plasma, you can continuously make an iron bar, a wood bar, an aluminium bar, depending on positioning and how much you allow the container to become. So, the channel in the middle becomes amalgamator of the plasmas, and at the end, you decide how much you want the slice of the bread to be. And that slice, thin, thick, thicker, becomes hydrogen, becomes oxygen, becomes uh, amino acid, it becomes anything you like. For example, to make food in the protein level as amino acid that the man can use, you don't need to fuse hydrogen and carbon. You release the plasma in packages, which are the packages of plasma of the uh, amino acid. All you're going to get is a continuous fat at the end. Then you decide what you want to add to it. So, the production of the new systems, new materials, what we call Magraph systems components, has started from yesterday in the Foundation. They are like little children, eager to see if they can do things, but in time they understand how easy it becomes. I don't apologize for taking you a long way to get here, but in the way we had to do it, for you to understand the process, at least some of you. So from today, we add, to the shelf of the knowledge of the equipment available to man, the universal components, what we call Magra components.